Oh. Oh. What is this? Have you taken a look at them yet? No. Can I take a look at them? <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. This one too? Yep, yep. Yeah. Oh! Giddy up. Okay. I'm gonna go get my microphone on. Uh, you'll get a microphone on this one, yeah? yeah okay, okay, I'm gonna be right back. Good day, friends. My name is Justin Waterfield. I work at the Bloor Street Long & McQuaid store here in Toronto, Ontario. And we've got a bit of an interesting video today. Uh, so a little bit of backstory. My producer, the guy behind the camera, Matt, called me up and said, uh, we need you to come down to the studio and shoot a, a video with some amps. And I'm like, cool. I don't know what they are. And I just found out when I walked in, we have some new amps from Gibson. We have the Falcon 5, and over here we have the Falcon 20. Now, I'm going into this without any prep. I have no idea what these things, I mean, I have a general idea of what they are. These are, I guess, supposed to be kind of vintage reissues, but not really like a modern take on some old uh, Gibson Falcon amps. Um, but other than that, I haven't played them, uh, I haven't seen the specs, I really don't know what to expect here. So this is kind of, I guess, a bit of an unboxing video without the actual unboxing, uh, more of a first impressions video. So I came down here today with my trusty Les Paul here. This is uh, my 1958 reissue with some sort of medium output PAF style pickups. I'm just going to be going straight into the amps today. That's going to be the signal chain. Um, so first, before I you know, we plug in and we see what these things sound like. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you what I see first. Uh, so this is the Falcon 5 over here. This looks like, if I'm looking at it correctly, probably a 10 inch speaker. And the controls on the top are volume, tone, and reverb, which is interesting. Usually you don't find amps this small with reverb in them, unless it's like, uh, like a digital reverb, which I don't think is the case here but we'll find out in due course. There's a low and a full switch, so some sort of uh, power attenuation, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm just gonna take a look here at the back. Okay, interesting. So I see a single 6v6 power tube. Tells me it's probably a single-ended, cathode-biased 5, 10-watt amp, I'm guessing. So very similar to like the old Gibson GA5, uh, just off the top of my head. Uh, looks like there's uh, a spring reverb tank in there, so probably a tube-driven uh, a reverb circuit. And, uh, and I did see an Alnico Jensen speaker in the back. I don't exactly know what kind or model, but I'm sure we'll find out. So let's see what this thing sounds like. I'm going to point the volume and the tone straight up the middle at noon. We're going to put it on high power. Hopefully it doesn't blow my head off. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit of reverb, and we'll see what it sounds like. First impressions, right? Okay, right off the bat, this is, wow, this thing barks, okay? I'm sitting like right next to it. It's, it's really, it's really loud. 
Um, it's a, pretty much exactly what I thought. This has got to be, you know, under 10 watts. Uh, it's loud, but it's not like I'm going to go deaf loud. Um, the reverb at this setting is definitely noticeable, especially if you sort of chop your notes. Um, yeah, not too bright, not too dark. Um, so for that, I was pretty much in the middle position on my Les Paul. Then I flipped to the neck pickup. It does clean up exceptionally well, uh, which to me says there's not a huge amount of gain uh, sort of built into the circuit. This is less of a modern sort of like lots of preamp gain kind of amp. This is more of a vintage flavored, uh, full bodied sort of crunchy amp. So let's leave the amp where it is now. Let's flick to the low, low power setting and see what that sounds like. much more manageable on the low power setting. So one thing that I've noticed here, uh, in keeping with the sort of vintage Gibson amp tradition, there's no master volume. It's just volume, tone, and then the reverb. So to get any crunch out of this thing, you gotta turn it up, right? Uh, so I think the inclusion of the power uh, attenuator is really, really useful because I think the grind from this circuit is going to come from all the tubes cooking at once, not just the preamp, not just the power amp. It's a combination of all those tubes together. Uh, there's something else I want to check. Give me, give me one second. Aha. Okay. Okay. It's what I thought. This is built in California. So this is built by Mesa Boogie. Okay. Uh, I'm sure most of you know, but for those of you who don't, Gibson actually bought Mesa Boogie, I want to say maybe last year, the year before, and I had a feeling something like this was coming. Back in the sort of 90s, um, Gibson amps were built by another company, uh, which has since gone out of business. And since then, there really haven't been Gibson amps on the market. And when Gibson bought Mesa Boogie, which is known for the dual rectifiers and the Badlander and the Fillmore and all these great sort of modern high gain amps, but also vintage flavored amps. I was kind of like, oh, okay, okay, so, something's up here. And there it is. So these are built by Mesa Boogie. Uh, obviously not, not anything like the current Mesa Boogie amps uh, that I know of. When I, when I first saw the white Tolex, I was thinking, you know, maybe somewhere in the realm of like a, uh, a California tweed, but this is, this is quite different. So uh, one other thing that I want to try here is dial back the volume to maybe 10 o'clock and we'll play with the tone control and see what this does. So I'm going to roll it all the way off. So this should be the warmest setting. Now we'll come back to the noon setting. And let's go all the way up on the tone control. I hope you guys heard that. So when the tone control is rolled up, the amp gets a lot more gain. And this is very common for, uh, you know, the sort of single tone control type amp circuits. It's actually letting more signal pass through 
to the rest of the circuit as opposed to rolling off all that high end, all of that bite that really overdrives the rest of the circuit. So on this amp, if you want more gain, just roll up the tone control as well as the volume. And you know, you can always balance that out with the tone controls on your guitar if it's too bright for you. That's a great way of doing that. So let's go back to the middle position on the tone control and hear what this reverb is gonna do when I wind that up. So here is with the reverb at about nine o'clock where it has been this whole time. <laughs> And I'll wind it up to about noon. And what the heck, let's just go full bore on the reverb. So with the reverb up all the way, I hear a little bit more gain there as well, which number one tells me it's more than likely a, uh, a, a tube gain stage. And um, yeah, it just seems to add a little bit more bite to the signal. This is, this is really, really nice. Very cool. So the other thing I'm curious about now is what the actual specs of this thing are. Um, so Matt, do we have like a, a, a book or something here? Yeah. Oh. Oh, cool, look at this. You get a embroidered patch, Gibson guitars and amplifiers. Oh man, that's so cool. You buy the patch, you get the amp for free. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's see what this has in there. Oh boy, lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Quick start guide, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Not in English. Good Lord, how many things do they include in here? And, ah, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, all right, so after flipping through the manual, I do have an idea of what the actual specs are. So I was right, it's a five watt single-ended amp. Single-ended means it just has a single power tube. It is cathode biased, which means it's self-biasing. So it takes a 6V6, but you can also plug in a 6L6. So you get probably an extra watt or two out of it using a 6L6. But what you're going to fundamentally change is the character of the breakup. Uh, that this gets. 6V6s are lower powered, so they break up more easily. Uh, they're one of the most underrated power tubes, in my opinion. Uh, I love the sound of these things. But with the 6L6, the, the inherent headroom in that tube is much, much higher. It's going to feel a little bit stiffer. It's going to be a little bit cleaner when you wind up that volume. Uh, it looks like it has three 12AX7s in the preamp. So... Probably one, maybe two of those are going to be for the reverb circuit, which is all tube, I found out, which is super cool. And the attenuator is actually an attenuator, the, uh, the power switch. So because this is such low wattage, they can actually include uh, a power attenuator inside the chassis. This isn't like a pentode triode switch that you usually find on bigger amps that can't facilitate... Um, like a power soak of that, that degree inside the chassis. Typically you'd need an external attenuator for that. But here you actually get it internally, which is very cool. The other thing that I noticed in the manual is that uh, this thing has a line out. So you could 
conceivably use this to feed um, like a mixing desk uh, or f feed it directly into your interface uh, and get some IRs on it if you want to record at home. Now, it's worth noting that you'd have to keep the speaker connected for that. So uh, the speaker would still be blaring, but you'd get a nice clean line out feed that you can then adjust uh, later on with IRs or whatever you like. Um, there are also some sample settings here in the manual. I'll show you these real quick. There's four sample settings that they've given us. Clean as can, furry clean, Falcon drive, and, <laughs> and imploding. This is hilarious. Um, let's see what Gibson thinks we should try on this amp. So we're going to start off with clean as can. That's pretty clean. Furry clean is the next one. So we're going to dial up the volume to about 10 o'clock. We're going to knock back the tone just a little bit to about 11 o'clock. Reverb stays where it is. Very similar to what we had before, just on the edge of breakup. That's, for me, that's exactly where I like this type of amp. It's got some teeth on it. All right, let's hear this thing implode. so cool. That is a great sounding amp. Holy smokes. Whew. Wow. Okay. Now we're going to do a switcheroo. We're going to move the Falcon 5 out. We're going to move in the Falcon 20, which I've noticed has a few more knobs. So this is going to be a bit of a different circuit and probably a, a very different sounding amp. So let's, uh, let's get this guy set up. All right, so we did a switcheroo, and now we've got the Gibson Falcon 20 up on the stand. This, again, I haven't seen any specs or anything like that. Um, haven't even heard it. Uh, so this looks like a 12-inch speaker. Um, we've got volume, we've got tone, we've got reverb, same as the, as the 5. But then we've also got depth and frequency, which to me, says this probably has built-in tremolo as well, which I'm gonna bet that if they're having tube reverb, this is probably tube tremolo as well. Um, probably a bias tremolo on the power tubes, uh, hopefully, because that's, that's a really tasty circuit. We've got a power switch, full, half, and low, so three different power levels, which makes sense because we've got a 20 watt amp here, so it's gonna be not necessarily louder in that it's pushing more decibels, but it's going to have more headroom. So you want to be able to step down, um, I guess, more as you need more grind out of it. 
and there's a, a port for a foot switch, which I'm going to assume switches either the reverb or the tremolo on and off. Uh, that foot switch is included, by the way. Um, so I don't know if the reverb and the tremolo are going to work without the foot switch, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to take this thing off standby. It's on full power right now, so <laughs> uh, this thing is right here. Uh, I'm going to point the volume and the tone at noon, same as, same as the last amp and give it a little bit of reverb, tremolo is off. Now, with the volume halfway up on a 20 watt amp, I wanna be real careful so I don't like shoot out my ears. So I'm gonna gradually roll on my bridge pickup until I, you know, am sure that I can handle the volume here. Okay, so initial impressions, way more bass response out of this amp versus the Falcon 5. So that tells me this is probably a two power tube circuit. So I'm guessing two 6v6s in the power stage may still be cathode bias, but there's definitely more low end thump there. Um, the breakup sounds very same. So we may be dealing with the same preamp circuit. Um, the reverb sounds a little bit more subtle on this. Could, could just be my ears. Um, give me a second, I'm gonna take a peek around the back and see what we got. All right, so we definitely do have two 6v6s running. Um, that explains more power, a little bit stiffer feeling, because um, now we're driving two tubes in, uh, in parallel rather than one just sort of single-ended. Um, we've got uh, another uh, Jensen Alnico speaker in there. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's twiddle some knobs and, uh, and see what we get. Um, so, ooh, do I want to, I'm going to knock this down to half power just so I don't, you know, go deaf and I'm going to wind up this volume and see what this thing's going to do. <laughs> Okay, so here is a really good example. So again, we have a non-master volume amp, so just the single volume. If you want crunch and gain, you gotta wind it up. That's why we got the power attenuator or power soak or whatever circuit is going on there. But here's the thing, you heard how off the top there it was in meltdown mode, right? But it cleans up really well when you roll back your volume control. These volume controls on your guitar are not just for decoration, right? It's not just an on and off switch you can really change the character of the amp, especially vintage style ones like this that don't have a master volume. You can really play with the character of the amp from the guitar. So it's almost like the guitar is a controller for the amp and you're affecting not just the, the, the breakup and the degree to which it's breaking up, but also the saturation and the tonality, right? Gets a lot brighter as it gets cleaner and it gets a lot woolier as you dial up the volume and you can control all that right from the guitar. Um, let's hear what the neck pickup sounds like, speaking of wooliness. <laughs>
Sounds like a tugboat. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh man, all right, manual time. Let's see what this thing's got going on under the hood. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one thing of note, the Falcon 20 seems to be just the model name. Uh, the manual quotes us as 12 watts at full power. So uh, the 20 doesn't necessarily denote the wattage, which is totally fine. I mean, the difference, the real world difference between 12 watts and 20 watts, let's face it, nobody's going to hear that, right? Um, that being said, 12 watts is certainly enough to gig with, uh, as long as you don't need a, a ton of clean headroom. And I think with the character of breakup this amp has, you know, that's not really who this amp is for. You're, this amp is for somebody who wants that, that sort of gnarly breakup. And even, you know, in atomic meltdown mode, you get that really, really cool fuzz. That's, that's super cool. Um, but the low power settings are a little bit different on this amp. So here, because of the, the higher wattage, we don't have an internal attenuator going on like we did on the Falcon 5. We have what's called a pentode triode switch, which I'm not going to get too technical here. It basically rewires the output tubes for an alternate mode of operation, whereby the, the wattage comes down, but it also changes the fundamental character of the power stage. It sounds slightly different. Sounds a little bit warmer, shaves off a little bit of top end. So you can use this as a, as a power reduction, which, you know, that's what it is and that's what it's there for. But you can also use it as like a tone switch as well, right? If you don't need to be particularly loud, if you don't need maximum wattage all the time, you can just change the character of your output tubes. And if that's what you like, then stick with that. That's super cool. In the low power setting, so remember this has high power, mid power, and low power. In low power, it's again in the triode setting. So again, lower power. Um, I don't know what other tricks they're doing here to, to get the wattage down even lower. It doesn't exactly say in here. Um, but that's something we'll, we'll try out in a second as well. Again, in the back of this manual, we're getting four settings, handmade by Gibson. And uh, we should see what these sound like. Sorry, one thing of note, I should, I should say that this amp, as well as the Falcon 5, have high and low power inputs. So it has two inputs. One is full strength, so the signal of the guitar just goes straight through. And then in the low um, input, it's actually padded down. So if you have something that has humbuckers, which will hit the amp harder than something with, say, single coils, you can tame it even further. Um, so what I'm going to do on the drenched clean setting, which is the first one on the menu here, I'm actually going to go into input two and see if we can get this amp even cleaner. That is a lot of reverb. That sounds really, really good. So I was on the neck pick up there. Let's try another setting. So I dialed up a little bit of the intensity on the tremolo there. Uh, this is a really, really nice, smooth sounding tremolo. Um, yeah, it's really, 
really, really cool. Let's, uh, let's keep going with this setting. Let's see what, what else we can get out of it. So that is with the speed of the tremolo at maximum. So not too fast. It's nice, nice kind of like just rhythmic thing. It doesn't get crazy, doesn't get into like ring modulator territory like a, some other wacky tremolos. And it's just, it's so buttery smooth. It's just like, it's not sort of this hard chop. It's kind of got a nice wave to it. It's almost hypnotic. Let's try another setting here. <laughs> The more I play this tremolo circuit, the more I like it. And the reason for this is that you can do these sort of loud rock riffs and the tremolo doesn't sort of like chop off your notes. It's there when it sustains, but when you're sort of riffing, the, the movement kind of gets out of the way a little bit. This is, this is a really, really tasty circuit. I really like this one. And I think the inclusion of the high gain, low gain uh, inputs is a really, really nice touch. And it's really underrated in a lot of amps today's. Most modern amps just have the one input and then you channel switch between clean and dirty or whatever. But with this, you could hook up, like for example, an AB box and flip between the low gain and the high gain input if you want sort of different gain stages, if you will. Um, very, very cool. I wouldn't even necessarily put a pedal in front of either of these amps. I think they get kind of fuzzy and funky enough as they are. But uh, why don't we try a little experiment? Why don't we put a distortion pedal in front of this thing and see what it does? So right here in front of me, I got a Mesa Dynaplex, um, I guess kind of overdrive pedal. So let's hear what this sounds like. So on the amp, I've got the volume and the tone at noon. I've knocked it down to the lowest power setting. And this is what it sounds like, dry. And here is with the pedal. So it clearly takes pedals well, and it really changes the character of the amp. I mean, it's, like I said, it's got enough grind and grunt on its own, but if you, if there's something that you want to add in there, another spice, if you will, another flavor to the dish, you can easily do that with pedals. It'll take pedals just fine, so fear not. Let's try the rat. Let's try the rat. <laughs>
Whoa, super cool. Oh man, this thing sounds great. I mean, that's just two very different drive pedals, mind you, but they both added so much of their own character to the circuit. This is, this is a really, really good sounding and both of them are really good sounding. Um, so that about wraps it up. I had no idea what to expect coming in here. So uh, thank you for joining me on this journey of exploration. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna get coming in here unrehearsed, but I appreciate you guys being here nonetheless. Please like and subscribe if you dig what we're doing here on the channel. It really helps us out. These amps will be available at all Long & McQuaid stores and online. I really, really recommend you get down to your store and try them out in person. Again, my name is Justin Waterfield. I'll see you on the next one.